Today, this came in the post. This is the SOSD, which plugs straight in and through the NASA to create uh, an OSD without any additional GPS and stuff needed. Uh, it's just out of the box. You get a bunch of connector cables, servo based cables, and the actual main unit itself. Uh, the instructions are a little bit scant on exactly what you do, but there's reasonable markings in here. Uh, basically to say in here is RSSI, the view switch, the throttle in and out so it can give you a throttle indication and these are for the F1 and F2 which I think creates the uh, artificial horizon. You've got the battery and apparently current sensor in uh, this one and then this last one is um, VTX in and Nope, camera in and VTX out. Uh, over this side you've got connectors for GPS in and the um, there's a PMU in and these ones go back out. So it, it looks pretty easy to follow I think. So let's hook it up to the NASA and see if uh, we should get something happening. So just before we connect, I think it's worth mentioning where this project actually came from. This is based on something called the Mini NASA OSD, which was made from the Minim OSD, which is often used in the Ardu pilot stuff. The general idea was that you could make uh, sort of through cables from the NASA um, and decode the signals, uh, and by hooking up extra bits and pieces to one of these Minim OSDs, you could get a lot out of it. The only problem is for people like me which aren't brilliant with a soldering iron on a very uh, small scale this is a bit of a soldering nightmare I mean you're, you're talking about going directly onto legs of very small chips here so what this is is basically they've taken a minimum OSD like OSD and they've prepackaged it sort of already so you can just plug stuff in um, so for people like me it's a it's a bit of a no-brainer really it's an easier situation um, I did get this one from Good Luck Buy, as you, you might sort of flash up. It's actually also available from Banggood, and for people in the UK like me, they're actually stocking it in the UK office now, which is uh, useful. Here's my 450 to start, and at the moment I'm using this Suppo Pigeon OSD, which has its own GPS here. Uh, it isn't particularly good. It's got a bunch of uh, voltage sensors coming in and out of here. And the NASA flight controller is tucked firmly in the midst of all that. So I haven't had to crack the top of this for a while now, but well, no time like the present. Let's get on with it. My intention here was to film the SOSD being plugged in and which plugs went from where to there on the NASA. What I haven't got is a very good camera angle or, in fact, uh, a very good way of doing it as I spent extra time checking I had all the wires around the right way um, and having some problems fitting certain bits in. So rather than try and describe that, um, because I'm going to have to make a part two of this video, uh, see, see later for why, I'm going to cover that in more detail for anybody who couldn't uh, really work it out very well from the instructions themselves. Well, doesn't that look better? Obviously not, we're in mid-wiring, but we've got everything in eventually. The in-outs here for the GPS and the LED. Uh, RSSI is not in because at the moment RSSI ends in this, so that needs a solder. Um, we've got a switch hooked into what was my tilt for the gimbal. Throttle in and out, F1, F2, power and uh, this very hacky... Uh, a voltage in out so let's switch it and see what happens obviously we're not going to get any GPS's in here we're indoors but the GPS antenna is upside down but uh, I just wanted to see if anything would happen I've got my um, old dominator module made into a receiver there hooked up to this TV so let's plug in and we get well, the main thing we can see is why is it going to fail safe? The 
turn that on. Interesting. And it also looks like this is set to PAL mode. My camera's in NTSC, so I've got bits falling off the end of the screen there. Over there. Maybe this is weird because it's in fail safe. Let's have a look. Okay, through some experimentation, we found out that the reason NASIP was going into fail safe is it didn't have a throttle connection. And it's because basically this suggests minus plus and the function as being that would be signal uh, positive and ground but it's actually the other way around so everything's reversed so it works a bit better now let me just play around. okay so uh, it knows about the modes now, if we try and switch them. Attitude. Seems to get the IOC modes as well. IOC IOC I did know about them, there you go. IOC IOC um, and it knows about the throttle. Yay. We don't seem to be able to switch modes on the... Oh no, we've got it there. Oh, it looks like we found the different modes. Look at the, uh, the artificial horizon is way off. Okay, so why is the AHI looking like that? Uh, it's basically because if you go to the NASA resistant, you need to actually turn the gimbal switch on, which then results in this. You'll also find, as I did, that the default centering of zero um, fits it today. So the quad is up at this angle and it's way down there. So through some Trial and error basically. Change that to there. And I got it near the centre. And you see now as we walk around, it's all happy. And I'm Kidori. Good. So this is my quick and dirty. Um, everything in place uh, and it really is quick and dirty it's just got the board lying on top there all the wires are too big so we've got the wires sticking out there we've got you know bits of cable ties trying to hold things in uh, but ultimately it's not going to go on this frame it's going to go on my new frame along with the NASA so rather than shorten everything and get it in place here I'm just going to test fly it see how it is um, I need to make some changes on the OST and for that I need an FTDI adapter which I thought I had but didn't. So rather than mess around and wait for that, I thought let's try and fly it while we can. Um, we've changed the GoPro to put out a power signal which fixes one part. Um, we've gone into the NASA Assistant uh, and sorted some stuff out there, which I'll show you. Uh, yeah, so it's quick and dirty and it's quite nasty looking, but let's see if it, uh, it works for starters. Here's my test flight and I deliberately started a recording before I even switched it on because I wanted to show the boot up sequence. So I thought what was very useful about this boot up sequence uh, after it gets here and my uh, gimbal <laughs> is pointing downwards is you see the little flashes uh, next to the GPS set that, that's basically saying uh, one green and several red. You see at the moment it's got zero satellites um, and it gives you that indication on the OSD which you won't need to look at the LEDs for it, which I, I, I think is quite cool. Um, it gives you a good visual representation of what you've got there. Having got five satellites, it's come up with a fix. Um, although what I notice is as it picked up more satellites, um, it's got its position more accurately. But because it already had a position, it now thinks it's four meters off the floor. Um, I had to check with a friend here because uh, 
the OSD had some extra bits on that I didn't know what it meant. HA is apparently your home altitude, um, which it's now saying well, 4 metres above. The TA up the top there is basically altitude above sea level, which isn't particularly useful. Um, but we've taken off here, and everything seems to be working quite nicely. Um, I, I pretty much like what it's telling me. It, everything seems to update quickly um, and be pretty accurate. But there's a couple of weirdies which I don't really need. The That angle thing up the top middle is a bit pointless. I was kind of thinking that the um, AHI was quite useless as well, flying for a gimbal as I am here, because of course, I should always be straight. Um, but then I thought, you know, it could be quite useful to know what angle I'm at, even if I'm looking straight, because it helped me decide if the quad's hard into the wind or something like that. Um, I also quite liked on the radar display, you'll see just above the center, it's got quite a good position of which way the quad's facing. Now this seems to update very quickly, so I don't know if it gets particular information from the compass um, when it turns around, because it doesn't seem to need to be flying forwards to actually work out its direction, so you can spin on the spot and that will actually spin. You'll notice now as the uh, radar position gets towards the end, that 250 meter thing on the right hand side will suddenly bump up to 500 meters. So this is basically showing you the radar range. Um, so relative to 500 meters I'm about halfway out so you have to sort of think 500 meters at the top of the screen there. But uh, first impressions are really good. Um, the battery voltage was accurate. It's reasonably useful to look at the throttle but it's not it's not amazing uh, in sight. Uh, I've got a throttle switch when I need it. You just see here we've changed mode to uh, attitude and again we can see the LED slightly different. Um, I notice a very slight delay in changing, maybe about half a second as you change modes before it would uh, come up with it. It's, I mean, it's not a problem in terms that uh, it doesn't actually flick into the mode straight away. Clearly there's a delay in the LED update which this gets. But my main thing now is to go ahead and get this FTDI adapter in order to start changing the screens about. My, my immediate concern of course is that it's not in the video uh, mode I want. I'm having to run my GoPro in PAL mode which may sound a bit weird because I'm in the UK and we're a PAL country but in terms of HD it just means that we're getting 50 frames a second instead of 60 frames a second if we set it to NTSC so I will fix that and um, what I can do is I should be able to have two screens of access to do things so I want to get rid of things like the TA I'm not exactly in love with the the, the radar um, the throttle percentage might go but I should hopefully be able to mix it up on the two screens and perhaps have one display where I've got everything I want um, and one display which is a little bit more minimal. So um, as soon as that comes through in the post I'll work out how to do that and I'll create a video showing you how to do that uh, to help anybody else out. So I hope this has been um, useful because one thing um, I found when purchasing this is there, there wasn't really any useful guides so hopefully <laughs> this is one but I will see you in the next video for more setup stuff.